all that we need to do is to avail ourselves to God and tell God, here we are, we are ready to be used. Have you lost hope in life? Are you confused as to what you are on earth for? Do you want to know how to live a life that is pleasing to God? Are you lost in the world with so much religious division and different teachings? Do you want to practice Christianity as you see it in the New Testament? Then it's time to look for the Church of Christ nearest to you. We, the members of Churches of Christ, we seek to preach the Word of God as taught and presented by the Apostles in the New Testament. Our goal is to convert all people for Christ and to ensure that salvation becomes our main focus. For more information about the Church of Christ, contact us on 0244 251 084. The Church of Christ, the ground and pillar of truth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ continue to be with you, beloved. And we are so grateful to have you early this morning as we reason together from the Word of God. I'm so grateful to have you once again as we looked into the Bible and we continue the discussion, the credibility of the Bible. It's your brother Emmanuel Jesse Kwanza once again. And as usual, I want us to pick up our Bible Pick a notebook and a pen, probably make some notes. And I believe that at the end of the discussion, you will learn something new from the Word of God. We have been telling you that the Bible is indeed credible. And when we look at it from a historical perspective, the Bible is historically accurate. When you look from the scientific perspective we could see that the bible is indeed scientifically accurate there are a lot of archaeological findings and a lot of things that today we can surely rely on and to be very convinced that indeed the bible is the inspired word of god in our previous discussion i've tried as much as possible to indeed prove to you that yes the bible indeed claims to be an inspired book and yes, it is an inspired book because it is the word of God. And no one today can tell us the Bible is in the word of God because people have just been saying, you've been glad to make us a Flavius family be and a true Bible. No? But beloved, when you continue to read the Bible as I am doing and as I have continued to do, one thing that I can tell you for sure is that anybody who reads the Bible and thinks the Bible was written by somebody. Obro nibi neti baby na watro Bible na maya. Yeah, mekano kracha ose. I was here every year. Obro nikro no niya sum no ati ana. Because Obro nikro no kuta some divine. I can't say it should be a one imu or one yami su anti ano to me can in some way tisa. Because the message of the Bible is not a message of just a mere man. So if people are saying that it, 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 it is just a man or some men who s s sat somewhere and then wrote the Bible for us, then indeed those people, we should definitely find them and then worship them because they indeed deserve to be worshipped. But upon everything, one thing I want you to understand is that the Bible has always been under attack. Many people have been attacking the Bible both physically and then even spiritually. Right from the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse number 3 and 4, we could see that Satan attacked the word of God and told Eve something which God did not say. In the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, the Bible said, But of the true of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. 
So over here, the serpent, which is a representation of Satan, is trying to reveal something different to Eve. So the Bible or the word of God has always been under attack right from creation till now. And aside that, you could hear a lot of people telling us today that yes, the Bible is not the word of God. People are attacking it. As I gave you some references so when we're about to begin our discussion, that right in the Old Testament, in the book of um, Jeremiah chapter 36, there was a king by name Joachim who took a knife and then cut the word of God into pieces. I mean the scrolls and then burned it. He put it into a fire for it to be burned. Why? Because he didn't like the message therein. Aside him, there have been so many f famous infidels, Bible critics, skeptics, who always come out to attack the Bible that it is not the word of God. I talked to you about Voltaire, who was a French writer and an atheist, who said that 50 years from now, the world will hear no more of the Bible. But lo and behold, when he died, 50 years after his death, the Geneva Bible Society were printing Bibles in one of his houses that he left behind. Aside Voltaire, you could read of Thomas Pine. When you Google the name, you know. Who wrote The Age of Reasons 200 years ago and once boasted that when I get through, there will not be five Bibles left in America. But lo and behold, we are in the year 2023 and there are more than five Bibles in America and even in every part of the world. Even in Islamic communities, there are Bibles. So Thomas Pine was not successful in what he planned to do. Robert Ingersoll, who also tried and then attacked the inspiration of the Bible, that it was the mistakes of Moses, that the Bible is not an inspired book of God. And then we've proven to you that no, it is rather the mistakes of Robert Ingersoll because he didn't really understand the message therein. So as we are here today, I want you to know that yes, the Bible has always been under attack. I mean, God's word. And as of now, many people today are also attacking the Bible. And in the process of attacking the Bible, all that they could resort to is that the Bible contains contradictions. So people always say that there are contradictions, but I call them alleged because none of them has been indeed proven that indeed it's a contradiction. But just that people always claim Though no, this is a contradiction, but when you critically analyze those passages that they are trying to bring together and to tell the world they, it's a contradiction, then you get to know this is indeed not a contradiction, but rather people are alleging. They are just supposed errors, but indeed they are not errors. So today, take your time with me and then let us consider some of the passages people always say that they do contradict. But before then, what at all is a contradiction? If we are looking at the credibility of the Bible, indeed, does the Bible contradict? No. If the Bible contradicts, then God is not God. And yet the author of the Bible, no, because God is the God of truth. No, God is not the author of confusion. So he's not going to confuse us as people are thinking today. So the truth of the matter is, the Bible, if it is the word of God, there shouldn't be any contradiction in it. And this is what I want to prove to you today, and probably we'll continue some other time. When we look at the word contradiction, from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it states that a preposition so related to another, that if either of the two is true, the other is false. And if either is false, the other must be true. A situation in which inherent factors, actions, or prepositions are inconsistent. This is what Miriam Webster Dictionary declares to be a contradiction. Probably, let me take this side with you again. A situation in which inherent factors, actions, or prepositions are inconsistent. So when something is not consistent, then we could say that this is indeed a contradiction. And when we read Aristotle, one of his messages that he wrote about contradiction, he said that the same thing should be at the same time, both and not be for the same person and in the same respect, is impossible. That is an impossibility. 
So therefore, if we see such things in the Bible, then indeed, the Bible is not the word of God. But this is what I want to prove to you. Now, if you are watching me and you have questions, you can pick our numbers and you call. Or probably if you are watching on YouTube, you can leave your questions at the comment section. We'll take time to answer you for you to know that indeed there is not even a single contradiction in the Bible. But one thing we can do is that from critics' position, we could see that always they are picking Bible passages here and there. Skeptics infidels even when you go to one of their sites infidels.org you could see a lot of passages that they have listed and they are claiming these passages indeed contradict of which we are saying it is not true and the reason is that there is what we call a law of non-contradiction and the opposite of it will be a law of contradiction you show a law of contradiction you know, by defining what a contradiction is, which means a dear bakono a yeka huwa semna kufisi a ye a amasi a ye b a dear bakono that makes it a division that makes it a confusion that is indeed a contradiction. But the law of non-contradiction is that two opposing prepositions cannot both be true if they are being spoken about the same person, place, time, or any other information you could even assess about that into the law of non contradiction na dey back e be be unu say asem ba ko no say e kan e fani pa ba ko ho at the same time the same place they are nature say are there a contradiction but if it is not you cannot say it's a contradiction now this is what skeptics go about okay we will pick one passage and the passage will tell you the sequence is rich Another passage will tell you the sequence is not rich. Then they will bring these passages together and tell you this is indeed a contradiction. But the point is, which the sequence is the first speaker or the author is talking about? And which the sequence is the second author talking about? Are they talking about the same person? If yes, okay, then that could be a truth that there is a contradiction. But apart from me talking about the same person, the time may also factor in this. Somebody could be rich today, tomorrow he will not be rich. So if you are a name, can say the person is rich, you know. A name, para no usika or chana only sika and to me a say he's not rich. Indeed, we are talking about the same person, but the timing is indeed different. This cannot be a contradiction, beloved. This cannot be a contradiction. And let me quickly side with you and then um, give you one typical example in your Bible, in the book of Acts, chapter twelve, verse number two. Now, when you read Acts chapter 12, verse 2, this is what the Bible gives us. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. This is talking about Herod Agrippa, who seized Peter after he had killed James, the brother of John. And he wanted to kill Peter too. So over here, you could read that James is killed with the sword. Now, fast forward in the same book of Acts chapter 15, verse number 13. Another typical example is means um, uh, uh, another typical example is given here, and in Acts chapter fifteen verse thirteen, he says, "And after they had become silent, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me.' So the point is, James in chapter twelve is dead. In chapter fifteen verse thirteen, James is talking." So, a skeptic will pray these two passages and say, Oh, James, now you see, we will not know. Are we really talking about the same James? No, there are a lot of James in the Bible. In the James, in the air, can one say, Why? Chapter 12, and they say, Way there, or you're joining me. And now, chapter 15, or say, Way, and you're Jesus Christ. So, we are not talking about the same person. So therefore, one is dead, one is alive. You can't say this is a contradiction. No, no. The law of non-contradiction does not agree to what you are saying. So many skeptics, infidels, uh, critics, and so on, especially our Muslim brothers who always want to discredit the Bible, will go by this way. But indeed, this is not a contradiction, beloved. This is not a contradiction. This is not a contradiction. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 5, Matthew 27 verse 5, let me give you another example of which I want you to kindly read with me in Matthew chapter 27 verse 5. 
Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Aha, I talk here about Judas. A bro, he is to Christ my after he has betrayed Jesus Christ. And when he realized that no, Jesus couldn't save himself, so therefore these people are indeed going to kill him, he felt so sorry about that attitude. And he went and returned the 30 pieces of silver that he took from the uh, high priest and then the Pharisees. Now, this is what Matthew is telling us. Kindly turn your Bible with me in the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 18. And in Acts chapter 1, we'll read about something there. And that is indeed going to tell us if indeed these two passages are contradicting or not. In Acts chapter 1, verse 18. Now, this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity and falling headlong, he busted open in the middle and all his entrails gashed out. In the or see, do that, see, can one or G, you a two or return, you know, or more to as I say. Now, so as I say, no, a more a DB or more than man, but the point is, what high experience or see. In Matthew chapter 27, they say, oh, he hung himself. In Acts chapter 1, verse 18, they say, O fi, I dare not so be both for money, three papa, money, three money, and my cry day, a pay. So people are saying, this is a contradiction. How can this be a contradiction? The timing of Matthew and that of Acts is never the same. And yet the same. Now, Obi hung in for some period of time. They said, Nipa no sign, I dare not so, I'm humanitia. Definitely, Ubo Fomwa, Utiba Paya, and Empire. So, we are talking about the same person, but different timing. Where you are just the beginner, call your first will do we, and he say he hanged himself. If you are a reporter and you are watching me, you need catch yourself for reporting an incident. What are you going to tell us? Okwa, who beside those people around for evidence? We will catch your soul. Adeni Shasi, if we have a bedu, we will catch your soul. If we have a there are going to be a lot of information, but who can you know about me? One is going to supplement the other and let you know that this is not a contradiction depending on the time, the place, and the person you are talking about. So, beloved, these examples that I'm giving you is indeed proving that this is not a contradiction. Meanwhile, there are a lot of people who are listening to these things and sending them as messages to us. And so, oh, preacher, I have seen your post and I want you to answer this question. Are this contradicting? I say, no, this is not a contradiction. This is not a contradiction, but rather people are alleging. People are alleging, beloved, and that is not a contradiction. Now, there's one example I want us to take from the Old Testament for us to understand if indeed, comparing Exodus chapter 1, verse 1 to 5, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 22, and then Acts chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, we ask ourselves, say, how many descendants of Jacob went with him to Egypt? How many descendants went with Jacob to Egypt? Aha, hey, another controversy. Someone like Abraham ben Moshe and the Chidi for the common sense and in Crawford, all that they continue to do is to say, so, oh, poor crown on new mathematics. Abraham said, oh, poor crown, new marking kind, on to me count it. Adia, Bible, and they say, yes, 17, poor crown, say, yes, 75. What is the truth therein? Can you pick up your Bible and read with me from the book of Exodus, chapter 1? Verse 1 to 5. Quickly, let us observe what the Bible indeed gives us. And we'll get to know that, yes, there is not a single contradiction in the Bible. Exodus chapter 1, verse 1. Now, listen to the reading. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel who came down to Egypt. Each man with his household came with Jacob. Now, underline this word, each one with his household. Into our Bible, but the 12 tribes, you know, he mentioned in verse 2, Reuben, Simon, Levi, and Judah. In verse 3, Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. All those who descend, all those who were descendants of Jacob were 70 persons from, uh, for Joseph was in Egypt already. Into our one one Jacob, Nante, Koy, you know, or see, they were 70. Now, so now jo, Joseph did or Egypt did on Kan and Kahu. Now, my kind of can we see here into over here? Bible no my clear evidence. Say one 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 Jacob Nanti, you know, 
One for Jacob, now Panka. One 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 in a ninety year, those who journeyed with Jacob were seventy. So therefore, who can one you know, Jacob can one over there, probably seventy one. Ye kekako, now betty them, you know, okay, I say. Don't forget, Bible, they say they went with their household. One my figure, seventy. Okay, ye okay, in Deuteronomy chapter ten, verse twenty two. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 22. Let's quickly read through and then come to the knowledge of God's truth if there is indeed a contradiction. Chapter 10, verse 22 reads, Your fathers went down to Egypt with 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as the stars of heaven in multitude. Or say, Weja no mnua, one Jacob called Egypt, you know, they were 70. And they also confirm me say indeed those who journeyed with Jacob were seventy. Me say in fact Jacob on Kaho and the Shadano and Su ye na into me and wow. So Exodus one and Deuteronomy ten is given that there were seventy people who journeyed with Jacob. Now in Acts chapter seven, verse thirteen and fourteen, kindly turn your Bible with me and let's read from what the Bible indeed um going to give to us. Exodus chapter seven. We are reading from verse 13 and 14. Now, verse 13, do read. And the second time Joseph was made known to his brothers. And Joseph's family became known to the Pharaoh. In verse number 14. Then Joseph sent and called his father Jacob and all his relatives to him. Seventy-five people. Into Ose, aha. Joseph swam Yakofa, ne Papa Jacob. And ne one wa a cannon huny na including or no Joseph. Don't forget or Jacob ba. Ye boni di our Exodus chapter one. Or say, won yin na by yet seventy-five people. Na ahana nko fo a war problem no. Or say, oh, and the Bible no contradict it, and for that matter, the Bible is not credible. What is the truth therein? Beloved, I will entreat you to take your time and read the book of Genesis chapter 46, verse 1 through 27. Where do I mean to me no one kind because of time? But to was in that kind because maybe a revelation be be I will hold at the amount. Now, the possible solution about Exodus, Deuteronomy, and then the book of Acts, as we are always also going to consider Genesis chapter 46, verse 1 to 27, is that the number of Jacob's family. You could see from Genesis 46, Obebo 66, Woho. No, I bought 70. Near 75. I don't cry any mammy and sir, and yes, 70 and 75. You in Genesis chapter 46, Obebo 66, Woho, Eddie Amaye. The 66 journeyed with Jacob. Anna, your baby will say, plus Joseph and his two sons in Egypt already. Some call for me, and so I was so to me, son, and so ye. Joseph, a brother of Egypt, you know, or a mummy, you know, in Anna, Nayere, and so on, and anything. To Joseph or Nora, the mummy, you know, and in the year, on to a quail for Obeka Joseph, a Obeka Jacob, and in the bush, you know, or buy and one. What number are you getting? Now, let me break it down with you. Jacob's 11 sons plus one daughter. Jacob, aha, a baby who in a mat 12, no, the mammary, my do. Uh, I can't say Bacono, not Joseph and Cahon. Rubin, not our Emma and nine. Simon, not our Emma in Sia. I mean, Simon had six sons. Judah had three. Levi had three. Issachar had four. Zebulon had three. God had seven. Asha had five plus one daughter. Dan had one son. Naphtali had four. Benjamin had ten. Judas grandson, Judah no a woman ne, ne man so a wo to no wa nananu mienu and a fe asa so no wa nananu mienu when you take your time you read the book of Genesis well you will understand whatever that I'm saying now when you take your time and you calculate all these things one thing we are saying that the wife of Jacob's son were supposed to be 11 but they were not 11 no one yet 11 because no mienu wo mwa no wa yirinu ewu which is Simon and Judah their wives were dead remaining nine now plus the 66 is going to give you the 75 number and therefore paul is telling now say i didn't you know 75 are poor hey yeah addition in you know or the jacob or the joseph name my me no no or the new 
Any ne ma akani ni na wansu wa yenom. That is giving you the figure seventy five. Indeed, the Bible is not uh, uh, contradicting, but rather they always supplement one another. There are some information you read from one author. When you go to another author, the author adds more information to it. That does not make it a contradiction, but rather a supplementary information that we could learn from. Beloved, there are a lot of examples I can give to you. And therefore, if I'm to meet you once again, we're definitely going to consider the gospel account. Yeah, that is why most people have problems. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We will say, oh, what kind of Matthew are? Especially concerning the life, birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, as you are, as you are Matthew, as you are Mark, as you are Luke, as you are John, what is the truth therein? The Bible is indeed the word of God and it is so credible that there is not a single contradiction therein. A brand intimate to me in can all contradiction because if not hundreds, there are thousands of them are nipa LST. But no crab any wom, no cry woman yina and say, Unyamiha Semno, the word cannot be broken according to the statement Jesus Christ made. Beloved, this is the churches of Christ, and we want you to understand that if you want a deeper meaning to this, keep searching for the truth. I will rescue the perishing. So ube who ya ye videos be bring wahwa be to me a boa ma wen ya santi as any say people are just a legend but the truth of the matter is the bible is indeed the word of god and it does not contradict it your brother Emmanuel the sequencer came your way and want you to understand that yes the bible is so credible for man's salvation beloved see you god willing next week same time bye bye <laughs>